Laura. Hi. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes. Tell me why you're excited, Laura. We have all the things coming. We have all the things coming. Do you want to tell this lovely audience what hey. things we have coming? Because I am very, very titillated. Well, right can now. I tell you the first thing that's happening? We're yes. going to Bali. We are going to Bali. We're going to go to like the tropical nature, beautiful island. I'm beautiful. so excited. So excited. And we are Can't going to wait. be shooting four episodes there, which will take us all the way through there. November. Well, I am in Australia and unfortunately we'll be separated again but we get to watch each other every week separated but no you in my mind <laughs> we're gonna use our toys <laughs> and coming up in the new year january 4 through 7 we will be at the avn expo show we have a booth for the, the podcast and for me and my merch so you can yes. come and hang out and meet laura and i so come get excited for that it's january 4 through 7 at resorts world in beautiful las vegas so we hope to be able to see you guys there we are going to be having meet and greets live interviews yes. we are going to have merch all the merch that you guys have yeah. been waiting and wanting to see and buy it's going to be available first at the convention and then we're figuring out some new things for the new year as well so stay tuned um and we hope that you guys will join us at the convention get ABN your tickets show. get your tickets uh there will be a ticket in all of the descriptions whether you're watching on youtube or whether you're listening on an audio platform just check the description for where you can get your tickets we hope to see you there yeah Mwah. I remember trying to, like, lift <coughs> this thing and you have oil on you. And you're just like, you're just slipping yeah. everywhere. <laughs> this, is, this is how I work out all oil, the time. oil isn't sweat no. either. So it's like it's making you slide everywhere. Like, uh, you had some grip. They had me in this plank thing, right? But I had, at that point, they're like, touch all over yourself. So my hands are covered in oil, too. And then I'm going into a plank. I'm like, oh, f Oh, my wrist gonna be okay. I'm trying to look sexy. <laughs> Meanwhile, your pecs are flexing, so your you know, implant is shifted all weird. I'm like, are they gonna notice this? Ah. Like, it was so horrifying. And now here we are, years later, sitting in my house, just having a podcast. Welcome back, one and all. Thank you for listening. If you're new here, this is the Totally Wholesome, Not Dirty Podcast, and I'm your host, Molly Stewart. We define wholesome a little differently here, and my guests span everywhere from the adult industry to the vanilla side of humanity. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Word of mouth is what helps this podcast grow. So share with a friend, leave a comment, download an episode, or anything you can to help with the algorithm. I release episodes every Monday, and if you're subscribed, you'll never miss an episode. You don't want to miss out on all the crazy conversations that evolve here. Um, but that's enough from me, and let's get to today's oh, guest. Right, you're gonna oh, eat sweet it. Sweet love? Sweet love. <laughs> is this more dirty, of a central thing? <laughs> maybe dirty, like raunchy love? I don't know. Whatever kind of love you feel like, you just make it to that camera. I love is to, love. I have to say, I have. I usually am, like, pretty dirty. <laughs> like, a lot of spit, I've, everything. I, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Something fun. I don't know. Is it is it more of a redhead thing? Laura, I have a lot of spit, too. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a ton. So maybe it is a redhead maybe thing. Maybe it's a redhead thing. Maybe yeah. it comes... Maybe we have a special spit gland. I need to maybe. do liquid IV mm. to get a lot of spit. Oh, That's what really? I need. Yeah, I do. I'll drink like a liquid I, IV. And then. I love liquid IV. Me too. Did you know that one stick... <laughs> I'm not opening the show like this. I'm not doing this. I'm like, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> as long as I have my coffee, I'm good. Yeah, same. Laura, I'm oh going to challenge God. you today, and I want you to open the show. <laughs> You've heard me do it a thousand, well, not a thousand times. This is only the 62nd episode, so. Hey, hey, hey. The 62nd? Mm -hmm. Everybody, welcome to the Totally Wholesome, Not Dirty podcast. We have our host, Molly Stewart. I am Laura Contreras. And you are also a host. And a co-host, yes. <laughs> and today we have the beautiful... Lauren Phillips! Yes, she did the drum roll too. Hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Yeah, thank you guys for being here. It's been such a fun, such a fun journey. And I've been seeing all the comments on YouTube and I really appreciate that. If you guys are watching on YouTube, just leave a comment. Anything to help the algorithm. Just maybe type like spit glands. Redheads do it better. I don't know, something like that. You guys can get creative. <laughs> I like redheads do it better. Yeah, I like redheads do it better. It has a nice ring to it. It does. And it's just because we do, we in, do. in all actuality. Mm -hmm. Now, we were talking um, before rolling about how you're excited to be setting up your new home, your mm -hmm. new shoot space. Mm -hmm. And that's something I really like, too. And have you owned a home before? Yes. 
Yes. I have. But this is uh, this one I own all to myself. Oh, that's wonderful. Like, Queen. it's all mine. Mm. Like, I went through the process, you know, everything with escrow and uh, being self-employed mm -hmm. and having to prove everything and going back for my CPA and stuff like that. So it was all me. So mm -hmm. it's super exciting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like looking and I'm like, what the f am I going to do here? Mm -hmm. And then on top of like, still you have to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, setting up a house when you're self-employed, and especially when you're doing content creation, is so funny. It's like you have to make content of setting up your home. Like, you just have to, because it's like, That's well, I need, I need to do this, so I might as well do it naked, and people can watch it and go, wow, boobs. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like, literally was like, all right, well, I, wa I could probably do, like, a move-in thing, and, like, have a dildo, and, like, it could be POV, and, like... I did, like, a new video in every room of the house, like, when I moved in, you know, and got, you know, stuff ready. And That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. The other day, actually, I, I realized, I was like, I don't have a maid outfit, and the amount of hours I spend cleaning my home so the other day I made just a video of me in a maid outfit just cleaning my home and it was really fun and people really That's enjoyed awesome. it yeah, turned like into a little JOI at the yeah. end mm, you're good. like oops I missed a spot <laughs> <laughs> oops don't look look <laughs> <laughs> like but so I know also as far as like setting up a space that's amazing to like make content and then you're comfortable in because we do spend a lot of time in our home as much as we travel and do shoots and stuff like that but you started camming as well which is where I started and you started on chatterbait I think right I did how long did you do like chatterbait before you broke into mainstream oh my gosh uh I started in 2013 and I did it for I was a full-time cam girl for two and a half years and then uh I had saved up enough money because my whole goal was to be a mainstream porn I think that's what I wanted and uh there's this thing that like Allie's extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like uh so I just uh and I wanted to do something different because at that time uh can the cam world and porn were two separate things at that time. Yeah, like even they were. well I started in twenty thirteen as well. So I did hey! camming for a lot longer. Hey! <laughs> but, I'm but like yeah. I'm I like I remember when I started and seeing you and stuff like oh, that. Oh really? Yeah. I just I didn't know anyone saw me back <laughs> you know like I don't know it's one of those things when you're camming I feel like especially because they used to be such separate things mm -hmm. it felt anonymous for so much longer do you know what I mean it felt like a little bubble at least for me because I maybe because I did it for so long and that was like primarily the only thing but it felt like such a little bubble that the first time I went to AVN and people were like I know you I'm like how <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, it's funny because I remember everyone that I used to watch when I first started and I see like if they're still there, how they've grown, where they've gone to. And I still like, um, but when I was a, like just a cam model, I never really ventured out and like met and talked to people. Like oh, I had, no, 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 like you just, no. you shot content in your, in your place and that was it. It was, I was, I guess you would say like, I'm pretty much, I, I consider myself a social butterfly, but when I'm at home, I'm very introverted and I'm like, I'll just stay here and just yeah. do my thing. But um, yeah, like AVN didn't even have like a cam category yet. Like there was no. Yeah, uh, I didn't go to AVN until 2016 or something like that. Yeah, I didn't. I started going to AVN 2015 because mm -hmm. that's when I moved to LA. And they, I think at the time they didn't even have a cam model wasn't even a host yet. Yeah. Like wow. now they have a porn star and a cam model. Yeah. And I don't even think like uh, that wasn't even like an option at the time. Mm -mm. Yeah. Wow. It was very like porn stars would cam, but they would cam on mostly like streaming. Cause yeah. It was, like, and like they're like, oh, we'll pay you to do this amount of time or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And then like I don't even think my free cams was has a, had a contract with ABN at the time. No. I d yeah. I don't think so. I, I can't remember all, like, the logistics of that, but I wasn't really involved in any of that or, like, knowing really what AVN was, like, until mm -hmm. I went to the actual event and stuff like that. What was, like, your first, like, e expression on it? Like, what did you... Oh, I was like, what did you fun. think? This what did you both so think? Fun. Like, it your was... first time. It was crazy. Like, what, what was your first time like? Because... God, it was so long ago. <laughs> um, uh, I was... When I moved to LA, I was independent, so I didn't have an agent yet, like I do now. And uh, which is very hard work, but can be done. Yes. 
Yes. I still don't have an agent, so it can be done. But just look at these bags under my eyes that I tried to cover up with concealer this morning. It's not working very well. Our Chanel, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wait, sorry. YSL. (laughs) Designer under eye bags. (laughs) And um, so I I remember going to AVN and I had, uh, I knew people. I think I actually was, the booth that I was at was Live Jasmine. Okay. They had uh, paid me to be there and they paid for my makeup and everything. So I did that and I just, I already kind of knew people because at the time we had a lot more parties in Pollard than we do now. And that's how I got to know people was mm-hmm. to go to these parties and just start talking and getting numbers. And then literally it's, it's like selling your soul every time you're texting saying, hey, do you need a ginger? <clears throat> hey, are you looking for somebody? Like each yeah. month, like clockwork, boom, boom, boom. Hey, yeah, just putting yourself out mm-hmm. there. It's all you can do. But um, I remember that was the uh, year. So I, I would like I said, I was kind of. Um, independent for like since when I got there, which was like, two, God, I moved May 2015, booked my first thing in August. Oh, so wow. it took me that much. Like I like would just cam and then I would just try to get to know people because you have to build up your reputation. Mm-hmm. And when I went to uh, AVN, I was like, great. There's some companies that won't book you without an agent. I don't think it's like that that much anymore. But back but then it was back in the day of like the hierarchy of porn <laughs> yeah like if you're like back then if you were independent you were a little bit more of a a risk because mm-hmm. if you like didn't show up you have to like it's not like you can go to the agent and try to get it and then get another model yeah stuff like that so it's um, still difficult now sometimes when you have cancellations of scenes and all that kind of stuff and it's just like this instant panic of have we done all this for nothing can we find someone else who's tested in time <laughs> like, yeah that's a like, nightmare you gotta be real lucky, you know. Yeah, that happened the other, uh, the other, the other day. I have no concept of time. It was probably a month She's ago like, at this point. It was like, like yesterday. <laughs> it might have been yesterday. I don't even know. But I had that. Like we got all the way through makeup before they were like, "Oh, and the the other talent isn't gonna be showing up," and we were all just like, "Oh, that's it ended up working so out." But we thought times. for a good forty minutes that we were just gonna have to wrap up and go home so so sad too like you go there and you're like great i'm ready to work and that happens but luckily that day we were shooting here so i didn't have to go anywhere i was like (laughs) full face of makeup what should i do today or like waiting back for tests yeah you're just sitting there or like you're not even inside the building shooting so i didn't shoot really at all during like the pandemic with all like the you know 24 hour covid tests and all that stuff i did it once and i had the worst experience not Aww. like because of the set or anything it's just that the test, test didn't come back and so i waited in my car for like a good eight or nine hours like because you weren't even allowed to go into mm. set unless no, you're no hair no so makeup. i had to keep driving back and forth to starbucks just like pissing my pants i'm like what are we doing this is so worth the scene right <laughs> yeah it but, happened though it happened many times yeah. during covid yeah yes. that, that you were on, so you were on set a lot yeah more and like those 24-hour tests it was every day yeah. you know we had every a test. i feel like it was we went through like it's almost like sporadic moments in this whole testing and like at one point you were like oh don't get tested on like if you get tested on saturday you're not going to get it until monday or like you had to plan it out or uh if there was a a whoops in like delivery you know you're screwed like uh, and then at one point they were having there was a whole thing of them having false positives Mm -hmm. for covid and like having to then go and you're like I remember when you test again, you don't even have it, and you just yeah. like wasted the whole day. You're like, oh, cool. I remember mm-hmm. having to drive to LA, and I had one, and they mm-hmm. called me up and they're like, oh, you tested positive for COVID, and I was like, that can't be. I just got over it. It's fine. Like it's out of my system now. I yeah. was like, that's uh, it's a false positive, and they're like, well, you could have gotten a different strand. And I was like, no, I I know, I know, because <laughs> I don't feel like garbage at the yeah. moment, so I feel fine. <laughs> Thank you. And Let I me remember, work. I remember going and getting tested uh, again at a different facility, and. Uh, I it ended up being negative and I was like, see <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Mm-hmm. So and uh, how long did it take you to like really see yourself like take off in the mainstream industry because you were like doing all this, putting yourself out there all the time. Like that was my thing about like starting at AVN. I was very much like it was cool to perform on the floor, but the parties were not my strong suit because it's like, well, I'm not performing here. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're when you're a cam model, you're at AVN, you're doing live streams typically or like acting like you would on cam. And then it's like, well, then you're just around the other cam models and in a party setting. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> I, I'm not 
a big partier. Like, I, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, like, um, I have, like, a... This is going to sound weird, but I have, like, a set little thing that I do for myself when it comes to AVN and XBiz and any type of parties. And if I have to show my face and stuff like that, um, they get an hour of my time. <laughs> and after that hour, I leave. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like I just that's a good way to be I mean I've done that as well mm-hmm. in the past like because you got to like guard your own mental stuff especially during like an expo and stuff mm-hmm. that's already so exhausting yeah. like people don't realize like how exhausting it is and you have to worry about your health too like yeah. sleeping is very important and I've noticed like if I don't get a certain amount of sleep at one point like that's when I'm prone to getting sick. Yes, yeah. and absolutely. And, like, usually I'll go I'll go grab a drink, and, and it's so funny. I'll get, like, a whiskey neat, and people will see it, and they're like, oh, what do you have? And I'm like, oh, you know, it's whiskey and neat. And he's like, oh, yeah, you, you're really drinking hard tonight? I'm like, I literally sit with that drink the entire time I'm there, and it just... <laughs> you're just, <laughs> like, you're just in the corner observing and just <laughs> sipping slowly. Like, if you had a mustache, you'd be twirling, yep. just like, oh, I <laughs> don't want to be here. Or a cigar in my hand. <laughs> totally. There you um, go. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Swag. <laughs> like, I, I can see her in the cigar lounge at Caesar's Palace, just, like, yeah. observing. Just, <laughs> just I'm full already, latex. For one hour. That one glass of whiskey, just, yeah. like, nursing it all Trust night. Trust me, yeah. The resort world has a cigar lounge that I already know about. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's where AVN's going to be, too. I know. Perfect I already got it. I was like, great. But, I, um, like I got my spot already picked out mm. <laughs> like and there's so many parties especially with avn i feel like you know you have the white party you know browsers usually has a party evil angel usually has a party <clears throat> i don't know how it's going to be like this coming year but like there's usually certain parties you have to, like you have to go to or like you want to do the carpet and it's just like you know. there's only so much you can do well setting boundaries for yourself is a great thing and to anyone who is in the industry who might be listening if you're new or you kind of have those same kind of things set those boundaries for yourself like not just with fan base but also with the industry is like a whole because mm-hmm. it's not like oh it's it's everything bad or whatever but i didn't used to know how to deal in those situations so i would just drink heavily i didn't have mm-hmm. limits for myself i'm just like this is what everyone's doing so i'll do it too and it's like no you don't want to like just make sure that you know what you're comfortable with like going into a situation because you got to protect yourself yeah. at the end of the day and it's about making sure that you're like yeah respecting yourself and knowing what you want like i completely yeah. like i literally travel with uh, apple cider vinegar every like everywhere i go like every convention everything like even i've never had the avian flu because my i have it's just so funny i have like a pattern i have like a habit that like i'll have like a shot of uh, apple cider vinegar in the morning and then i do my thing and uh we used to have the circle bar so mm-hmm. i would go to circle bar i'll grab a drink i'd like talk about talk to people uh, if i have another party i'll go there um and then when I get back to my hotel, I actually, like, take apple cider vinegar and, like, a washcloth. And I, like, just bathe my body with all that, like, bacteria that was on me. And, yep. like, everyone, like, you're hugging everybody <clears throat> and, like, you know, and that's stuff. Fine. And then, you know, with the whiskey, that's also kills bacteria. So, mm-hmm. like, um, and I've never had, like, even with when I went to Exotica Miami this year, yeah. I heard a lot of people came back with uh, COVID. And I was Ooh. freaking out because I was, like fuck man really and i went to go get tested because the person um i feature dance there as well oh. at the pink pony and uh i'm like the person that i was hanging out with uh, sh- uh they got covid and i was like oh my god i gotta go get tested and i told my whole team uh hey you know you gotta go get tested my whole team and me none of us got covid wow I swear, man. It's That's really cider. lucky. Apple cider vinegar. That's you, heard awesome. it, you heard it here first from Lauren Phillips, everyone. Apple cider vinegar prevents against COVID. <laughs> but we're not doctors. We do make porn. That's so funny. <laughs> and I, I didn't know the whole whiskey thing either until recently. And yeah. my boyfriend was on a work trip. He's like, I feel like I'm getting sick. He's like, I'm going to drink toddy. some Jameson. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, whatever you need to do. <laughs> do a hot toddy. You can even do a hot toddy where you get like hot tea, put a shot of, uh, I personally like Irish whiskey. That's my favorite. Yeah. Um, just put a shot of whiskey in there and then it's honey, 
lemon and then if you want you can add like a cinnamon stick and stuff to stir it and i usually like i'll get you if you have any type of like third stuff like it'll knock it out yeah right? and like, like yeah. even with apple cider vinegar there's so much you can use as a toner for your face i use it in my bathtub to balance out my p uh, my ph mm-hmm. like um all that jazz. Miracle yeah. so stuff. i would like to also say about whiskey like if you're going to use it that way, use it how Lauren did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not how I did. Because I was also under the impression, you know, when I used to drink, that whiskey killed bacteria. So I was like, I'll just drink all of the whiskey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. I'll just like keep taking shots of whiskey and then I won't get sick. But when you do too much, yeah. you, you get sick. get sick. <laughs> No, I literally, yeah. I, cause I don't like doing Noted. shots. Yeah, like, I'm not a big shot person. Yeah. I, like, I hate doing shots. I was like, how do I deal with social yeah. anxiety? It I'll get wasted. Burns. <laughs> it burns. It burns. Burns away all the feelings. Um, but I've also done, like, I've done, like, whiskey tastings and all that type of stuff. Because mm-hmm. I love, like, I've done Ooh. whiskey tastings. I've done wine tastings. And I've also done gin tastings. And I like to appreciate, like, what these people are making for us yeah. so i'm not like i don't like anyone that ever any buys me a shot i usually you'll i don't usually like shot it down usually yeah. I'll just and the finer it. stuff they say you shouldn't you oh. should be able to sip yeah. it right yeah typically like, enjoy it like, hey you shouldn't be knocking back eight of these oh, poison filled oh, cups oh, in right? the <laughs> evening maybe don't do that maybe, like, maybe no. sip it and enjoy it like an adult you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in a sippy cup. <laughs> so you can't get it too fast. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> little fucking hamster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like my parents. Hey. <laughs> the only way I'm allowed to now enjoy alcohol, I have to drink it up my hamster. Like a dropper? I'll just give you a dropper. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Oh my That's God. That's enough. <laughs> That's, stop now. <laughs> you get more in an hour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can we see how you're feeling? <laughs> Are you still coherent? Okay, you can have one more drop. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> wow. Have you started making out with every woman at the bar? Okay, you're cut off. <laughs> I usually get how did I get avian it's, flu? <laughs> it's so funny because I feel like that's kind of like the sign. Like when I start feeling like a little buzz, my lips will start getting tingly, and you know you're just kind of like, oh, and I'm like, great, that's done. Water. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what's funny is we were talking about this the other day about how like there's no better coffee than like the first coffee of the morning, right? And then it's like if you have more coffee, more caffeine, you're chasing that feeling all day, mm. and I feel like that is the same like with alcohol as well because it's like i rem- yeah i remember like oh with the tingle you get a nice little tingle and then you want that tingle again so you get more but then eventually you're just numb yeah do you know what i mean and it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't replicate hit. it no. doesn't hit the same no. it doesn't <laughs> moderation fam. like moderation enjoy the finer things <laughs> um so also another fun thing is that lauren and i we both have we have stroker toys. We do. Right. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. How long have you had yours now? Because I know okay. Laura did your look for it. I got to glam both of you beautiful yeah. girls up for that. That, that was, was such a fun day. That was so cool. We did so many looks, so many outfits. You know, we knocked it out. Yeah. I got it. I wasn't that. I think. God, it's been a while. It was like two years a, ago, a year, a ago? year ago, I think it was like in April. Because I feel like she shot hers. You did her look. And I then a couple months yours. later. But it was, like, right before after yours. I think you did right before mine. And then, because you guys were, we were talking about, her. you were talking about doing the shoot, and then we ended up setting up a shoot for yep. Curious. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, we were a great like, We were right on top of, like, yeah. on each other like that. Because mm-hmm. I remember. Kind of stacked um, the redheads to together. Yeah, you back know, to right? back. Back to back, front to front, mm-hmm. clit to clit. I don't yeah. know, whatever. Hey. I don't know, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> like, how you doing? How you doing? Y'all need to play with your sugars together. <laughs> We should actually. I did that with Alexis Fox. We did a we did a content day. I don't know really how to describe the video that we made, but I'll try my best. So <laughs> I'm like intrigued now. I'm so like, what? Alexis had her stroker, and she fucked it with a strap on. Mm-hmm. But I held the stroker over my hoo ha, fully clothed. Like I don't think I don't think I got naked for your that stroker or hers. I held her stroker well, like she... it was my vagina, and then she had sex with herself. herself. Wow, yeah. you, you remember, remember right? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was wild times. It was she's comedy. A, she's a kick. <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> I'm like, you could have like st- stacked. Like yeah. had your pussy yeah. and then her pussy. I should have. I think. I think I had like, forgotten st- mine that day. I think that's the only strokers. reason we didn't do it. Yeah. But, oh man. Wouldn't that be cool? Dude. I like the stack. 
content LA, ideas. LA. I mean, hey. we could set something up. <laughs> I'm like, I want to stack some strokers. I love stacking. <laughs> Let's stack it. Stack it in pocket. You know what I mean? <laughs> How high can you go? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that company. Though. Yeah. Like, uh, they're uh, <clears throat> really nice. I know they have, like, they tell me about different promos and stuff. I just been super busy and, like, trying to, uh, on top of, like, ev- like, everything that's going on is just trying to fit everything in. There's only so, like, yeah. so much in a day and so much in a month and then no, all of a sudden you. a year come and you're just like, like there's it's, been so many things that I'm like, yes, I want to participate, but I don't have time i'm so sorry <laughs> but or you think they, you're gonna be able to do it and yeah. then you realize wow i'm really stretching myself <clears throat> thin here i need yeah. to like kind of cool it and it's you so know? exactly but it's also <laughs> like so easy to stretch yourself thin when you're enjoying what you're doing yeah. too so it's just like oh i want this opportunity i want to i want to do this but then it's like oh man i'm like stretched out on one of those racks like yeah. those medieval racks yeah. like when am i gonna sleep yeah <laughs> like do i like sleep, sleep? Is important. <laughs> what's, what's sleep you know or like <laughs> Um, at one point, like, oh, what does, like, what does my home look like? Or, like, when do I get to spend time with my, like, animals? Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, like, downtime, because I, th- I think we forget sometimes that our bodies is our job. Yeah. And, like, you and have to taxing. take care of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Balance. Yeah. You gotta balance. Yeah, because even, even just photo shoots, I mean, it's, it seems like, oh, you just, you know, do photo oh, shoots. But fuck no. Photo shoots are so taxing. Mm-hmm. The amount of, like, time, like, positions you have to just hold and that's like just even normal modeling, not even necessarily what we do, but what we do is an extent even more. It's yeah, like, like you know, you try to do pile driver <clears throat> and stuff like that. Like what <laughs> did, what was like the first mainstream scene that you shot like for you? Like what was what was that? That I shot for me or shot for like a mainstream <coughs> company? For a mainstream company. My first scene was actually when I was in Florida. Um, I actually started Amateur Pro when I started camming because. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like my thing i was like trying to figure out how i was gonna make my stamp and stand out like yeah. you know we're in an industry that has like over like forty thousand girls and um i was like how am i gonna stand out so my actually my first scene was for uh for reality kings okay. in miami and i did it's called mouth to ball <sighs> and the whole reason why i got picked for that scene was so it was one of those like uh, exercising Pilates balls that they had. And uh, if you know anything about yoga, like when you're doing, um, oh God, what is it called? Um, plank, I think it is. Um, anyway, uh, I'm drawing a blank. No but um, I had to be able to hold the ball with my legs at the same time. And they were like, can you do that? They literally, can you do this position? I was like, yeah, of course I can. Yeah, I, I used, to, I was a professional dancer. I was like, yeah, I can do that. But they didn't specify for how long. Yeah, they didn't. And, um, <laughs> uh, and then that's like that was my first scene. It was uh, just a boy girl, and I remember I had the best male talent. He was super nice, and the director was really. I was just really lucky. Uh, I did not know how to use a douche. I remember trying to figure that out. Oh my god, girl! <laughs> let's share douche stories right now. <laughs> the first time, like what? What was that experience for you? Because mine was like I didn't know I how to use so it. Dumb. I looked at it and I was like, <laughs> like uh, what is this? Thing? Yeah, it's like you've heard of douches, right? But you've never like needed. No a one douche. showed you how to douche. <laughs> no, like my mom didn't even tell me my period was coming, and she's gonna like show me how to use a douche. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's never happened. And um, so I was shooting uh, and I've only done girl, girl mainstream. But um, I was uh, with Holly Randall, and then Izzy Lush was my first mm-hmm. female talent, Aww. and she was so sweet. But, and, you know, Holly's like, you know, now just go take care of girl stuff. There's douches. You got the wipes. Like, and I was like, what's a douche? Like, what, what do I? And so I, you know, take it out of the weird Summer's Eve box, mm-hmm. and I was like, what is th- it looked kind of like this. Yeah. But like with a longer a bigger thing. Yeah. <laughs> filled, with, filled, up, filled with fragrance. And, yeah, and filled it with fragrance. Like it was like purple. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what this is. And so, you know, you think, okay, well, this is the skinnier part. So clearly that's the part that goes inside. And so I'm just there squeezing. I'm like, nothing's fucking happening. You forgot to pull <laughs> Not that I forgot. No one fucking told me that you have to pull out the yeah. stopper top and then it becomes from this long so to like this long. And you're like, oh! <laughs> and then they're like, so she had to show me how to do it. She's like, yeah, no, you, you pull it out. So I brought it out to her because I was like, 
I feel so weird, but I can't open up another one, and I've already shoved this inside my vagina. So I'm like You're trying the best to show person her. Now, like Holly's amazing. She's amazing. <laughs> she was so amazing because I walk out like holding it, but I'm also like covering the top that's been in my vagina. Like she's not about to like be putting a camera inside of my hole. Inside, like, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, I, I tried. I don't know what. And she's like, you have to pull it out. And I'm just, I pop it out. I was like, oh, okay, but. That was the weirdest thing. And then feeling it inside of you. Did you put the fragrance inside you? Yeah, because no one told me about the water part. Yeah. I think maybe she just thought I knew that part. Oh, don't use that. Mm -mm. It's not good. No, it's it not. dries you out yep. like nobody's business. <sighs> and it can cause some yummy, yummy vaginosis, which is yeah. really just delightful. It was a it was a wonderful thing. The scene was great. <laughs> the douching experience, not so much. <laughs> I just remember going in, like, <clears throat> I did mine in Miami, so they're used mm. to a lot of new girls. And I remember, like, like them asking, oh, go, you can go douche. And I was, like, I think they just saw the expression on my face. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, uh, it's just, like, my first anal scene. <laughs> like, my first anal scene, I, to this day, I'm shocked. Because, like, what I do for anal now is way different than You have, than like, my a whole first. prep period yep. now. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah, like, no, I, I'm just gonna, I'll just show up. <laughs> I remember waking up and, like, so I, like, stretched out my butt the night before. Because I'd done anal in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And also, like, on cam and stuff like that. Like, whatever. Um, so I'm, like, just shoving up a dildo up there. Boop, 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 mm -hmm. good. I wake up in the morning. I go to Starbucks. Grab my coffee, my, mu my muffin. And I'm just, like... And uh, my friend's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm having coffee. I'm eating. Yeah, like, like doing my normal morning thing." Yeah. <laughs> They're like, "Well, you have an anal scene today," and I was like, "Yeah." And <laughs> so, what if I poop on someone's dick? I don't give a fuck. But like, I ended up being super clean. It was so astonishing. <laughs> like I was like, "Oh, um, now See, I you were just made to do anal." I was. Your body is just prepared. Born, born for born. Born for born. For porn. Yeah. Oh, that's the title. That's a shirt. Oh, I can't. I don't know if I can put porn. No, in it's the okay. Title. <laughs> but that would be amazing if but I that's could. Amazing. I'll love you too. <laughs> that's like. I just and then now. MVP. No. MVP. <laughs> I'm a lifer. I'm going to be here for a very long time. Mm. Well, you have yes. a lot of awards and achievements. Your your lady sent over all these things and I was like oh my god oh my god like do you have an entire room just for like your prizes no. and awards <laughs> I, she's like no I place them strategically around my house so wherever <laughs> I go I can remind myself that I am a winner I just think yes. I haven't even like for me like uh, I don't know I haven't reached what I my goals or what I want yet so like I haven't in my mind I haven't made it yet really yeah I just there's haven't there's still more just, there's just I just there's I have these goals, and I want these goals before I can be like, you know what? I worked really hard for that. You know, I yeah. think I'm good. Yeah, but um, well, you do work very hard. I do. So I know, but I understand that same feeling because we're always. It's like chasing that first cup of coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's like you can have all those achievements. You can look back and, like, we just had a comedian Jordan Perry on last week, and um, <laughs> it was Laura, I noticed, and I thought about this later because remember afterwards we were talking about art. And you were like, and Molly does such good drawings and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And she's an artist. And I was saying, I was like, no, it's not. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not that thing. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't painted the Sistine Chapel yet. So See I guess I'm I mean? not an artist. She's so <laughs> like harsh <laughs> on her, her talents. I'm like, you're an artist, <clears throat> whether you like it or not. I think it's just being ha like, but humble. it's humble. Yeah. I think that's yeah. an important thing, but it's also like, good to have that mindset of like, I'm not done yet. Yeah. Like, I'm not ready to settle. I want yeah. to I literally, achieve. everyone's like... Uh, like, I have fans like, oh, you're like a celebrity. And I'm like, first thing, I don't even consider myself that. I'm like, I'm just mm -mm. a Jersey girl that likes to fuck on camera. Yes. And that's just how it is. Like, <laughs> and I like people to watch. Yeah. I'm just, this This is me. And I I think being humble and makes me appreciate what I have in life. So, mm -hmm. like, for me, I'm just like, I just want to be my Jersey girl and be me and do and do me and once my goals like once i'm like oh i have this 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 i can be like you know what i'm happy yeah and i can just keep like it'll keep going i'm right what's the next goals what's the yeah. next step and that's, that's, stuff like that's that. a really good mindset to have it's like it's just progression mindset mm -hmm. it's just being mm -hmm. like you know this is good but it's not forever and there has to be something new and there has to be something to push like yeah. towards like i think i have a good 20 more years <clears throat> 
as a t- as a talent like depending on like if like grandma porn blows up at one point or another you never know <laughs> no girl this is so here's what i thought that i want to do when i'm older i'm like when i'm in my 80s right what do i love to do baking mm-hmm. i'm just gonna bake naked on only fans yeah. if that's still a thing and i'll just make granny's cookies do all that fun stuff just be naked my boobs might still be okay like they're not real so you know what i mean well can you just picture right now like all the medical stuff that they have and all the cosmetic surgery like it's just going to build after a while like there's gonna be so much stuff like i'm like what's next but i'm just gonna be a bionic grandma like really old face but like kicking body like heck yeah i want to look like nina hartley (laughs) (laughs) like she's her body is so fucking amazing and Mm. she's so fucking smart like she's like my like i'm like oh yes but i feel like after 20 years and then i'll probably like i'm currently getting in, into directing now mm, that's so funny. um i feel like after a point like my goal is to probably be i want to get into uh dominatrix mm. and i could do that forever yeah that's yeah. there is no time limit and then um i'm thinking about like once i fully retire and just kind of do my own thing and not shoot for mainstream anymore which is probably never gonna happen (laughs) um i actually was gonna just like start like i have i fell in love with this cat breed called uh cornish rex and they're extremely hard to breed they're actually like very rare Uh and um and i wanted to start breeding them and they're like the uh, golden retriever of cats mm-hmm. so they're super smart and they can be taught stuff oh, cool. and they imprint on their human just like a dog oh. like when i go home he'll like run to the door yeah oh, and uh, he's cute. he's gone to like every like stuff like that so i've, I've thought about like what i want to do but like i have other things i'm like dipping into as well as like passive income and mm-hmm. like passive my, income is important extremely important yes extremely important money flow in money never money. sleeps yeah. yeah if it was like if you can if you can find a way to make money while you sleep you'll never work a day in your life exactly something like that Love but that's, that. that's just kind of the thing because like and and i can it sounds so weird to say because i'm like you know it will work i don't want to work for someone yeah. we work so hard you mm-hmm. work so hard Mm -hmm. it's just a different work yeah it's a different path yeah you know but it is work and for anyone that says it isn't like i challenge you to do it you know what i mean and to to be successful in it and to have it be something that's viable for you to make a living that's because if you if you don't put all into it you're not going to get anything out of it and it's so important to understand like things are never what they appear there's always so much more that goes into what you know they have no idea like right? i some of like i've had fans ask me like oh i really love this like video blah, blah. i'm like yeah i was on set for 18 hours for that one oh, right my God. <laughs> exactly yeah. it's like it's work but yeah. uh, again like when you love it i know mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it's totally like work work but, but it, it is but there are days that it does feel like work of course. but it doesn't take away the joy that you feel from like I, doing it because it's like well anything else that i'd be doing i don't think i would be enjoying myself as much no like it's been too long and when you get through it you're like yes so if you want to support the podcast and other avenues go to liquidiv.com and use code twmd at checkout to save 15 percent and get free shipping on anything that you purchase code twmd if you guys can help support everything because it's amazing to actually you know be able to also use this job and like no matter how people know us to kind of be able to do other things and to have those options to think well if i have a fan base who's interested in this then at least some of them are going to be interested in this or maybe others will be interested in this and there's so many paths that you can take with that and a lot of people close themselves off from being able to take that jump to kind of like do things for themselves and so that's really cool to see you know the path that you're on i just feel like uh as what we do like the famous like job title that's now is we're influencers we we influence people in many 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 ways (laughs) (laughs) oh my god (laughs) you know it's funny so i think the first time that i ever met you we i don't know we don't shoot the same thing but i was on set for playboy tv for a fitness episode Mm -hmm. and i think we got our makeup done in the same Mm -hmm. room we Uh, were like the i know it was like what the like white little like pan like it was either shorts or something and then a a white crop top mm -hmm. and i remember uh that day 
um, because they had put me on like leg press that the it, leg press itself was heavy as fuck. Like the guy gets on it at first to adjust it and he's like, holy shit. <laughs> and I was like, and it was so hot in mm-hmm. that studio. Like it was so hot. I was like, how is it? How is it this hot? And then they're like, oh, and we'll cover you in oil. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> to make gosh. you look sweaty. I'm like, dude, give me, you know, two more minutes of this and I'm going to be sweating enough that you're not going to You won't need it. <laughs> like, I'm so gross. I remember trying to, like, lift this thing and you have oil on you and you're just like, You're just slipping everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is how I work out all oil, the time. oil isn't sweat no. either. So it's like, it's making you slide everywhere. Like, I, you had to grip. This, they had me in this plank thing, right? But I had, at that point, they're like, touch all over yourself. So my hands are covered in oil too. Then I'm going into a plank. I'm like, oh. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Am I risk gonna be okay? <laughs> Trying to look sexy. <laughs> Meanwhile, your pecs are flexing, so your you know implant is shifted all weird. I'm like, are they gonna notice this? <laughs> like, I'm so horrified. And now here we are, years later, sitting in my house, just having a podcast. It's Drink crazy coffee. Life works. <laughs> Drink oh coffee. Like, or for me, this like beet juice that what? tastes like dirt. Like, I think you I said it tasted like bleh. <laughs> ta- I think I said bleh, but I meant like dirt because the beet and the. Ju- I'm like, ooh, I know it's good for me, but look. But it hurts going down. Bleh. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's healthy. I mean, it, that's it, all. It looks like it would taste really good. I'm just so I'm kind sip of it really that it's slow not. all day. So you can be really like little bits of healthy all throughout just the day. Just little bits. <laughs> just to keep I'm it going. You. I'd be like, fuck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I like healthy stuff, but it has to still taste good. Yeah, yeah I know. I was hoping the apple flavor. would come through a little more, but you know. <laughs> I have I have some delicious edible drink that we could pour in there for you later. Let's I might make it. it taste a little better, or at least I'll not make it going down. <laughs> Just like oh. I'm all. <laughs> I don't taste anything. It's so great now. <laughs> Is that how it's been in, in scenes sometimes? Just, I don't taste anything. It's fine. <laughs> oh, man. I, I remember, like, I feel like every time, like, the guy's drinking his dick and I'm on my knees, like, I feel like a, a dog begging for a bone. You're like, please, sir, may I have some more? <laughs> As he's, he's continuing to jerk. And you're just like, hey, is he going to come yet? Is he going to come yet? Hold on. All right. <laughs> Let me catch don't it. Get, don't get, don't get uh, in my eye. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what I heard about fake lashes? Is that they were made umbrellas? Like, they're like, like cop umbrellas. Yeah. No, like they were made. I had heard by like a like a woman of the night, like way forever ago, t- as to basically like shield sure. their eyes from cum. Is that what they were created for? Let's say. Let's say it. Even yeah, if it that's wasn't, true. I think that that's a rumor that we should start spreading because I can't remember where I heard it, but I feel it. like I've heard it more than once. So even if it's a rumor, I'm here for it because I really like the idea of cum umbrellas. And that's <laughs> what I've heard on set. It especially helps. Especially because yeah, I've helps. never seen them used as much as it. I have. Yeah, and it'll like porn. it'll dangle, <laughs> yeah. and you're like staring at it, like oh my god! <laughs> it starts hypnotizing you. It's just swinging back and forth, like, oh. and you're just like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you come from having cum in your eyelashes because that's porn movie magic, like, <laughs> oh. and then like you're like holding the dick, like. <clears throat> As you're watching it, <laughs> as it's dingling, like dingling, 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 the dingling, like, hold dingling. On, hold on, we gotta take photos. Okay, hold very still. But then it's cool. Uh, it kind of works out. But but you don't mean to look at it. But you know, in porn, you're always cheating your eyes, like pretending that you're looking at someone that you're not. So yeah. you're like here, but you just see the cum. <laughs> just, like, like, it's so funny because it's so true. <laughs> like you're, I'm sucking the dick and I'm like looking, like because they want to see your face, but there's nothing there. You just you can't look at the ca- the, the camera, so you're just kind of. <laughs> Because the guy, like, the guy is right there. You can't, like, or, like, when you're, like, riding them and all of a sudden you turn to the side. Like, no one rides somebody like that to turn to the side and not look at them. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let like, me. I don't want to look. Oh. Let me see my ass while it goes up and down at you. Like, I'm like. I love the way that my ass looks. I don't like the, how you look. I don't like how my ass I already looks. know what you look like. <laughs> I don't need to see it anymore. <laughs> and that's how porn makes men feel too, because they're like, we don't want to see you either. Like, cut yeah. off your head, damn it. We don't want to see that. <laughs> well, now they don't even have to see our faces. There's like a whole like what there what's that that girl like there's a couple girls now that like go in there and they don't even show their face anymore. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah they just show their bodies. 
Really? Yeah. Like in mainstream? Uh, well, in I'm content creation, I've seen yeah, that more. But like in mainstream, faceless. I feel like it's always always about the girl's face. In mainstream, yes. Like, you know, the girls... But I know there's I a lot of content consider- creators who yeah. don't show that we're masks. But it's and- so hard because right now, like, society blurs the lines of, like, who's a porn star and who's a content creator, you know, like... Or, like, and a clip artist. what's the difference at the end of the day? You know what I mean? Like... I don't know. I'm like... I worked really hard for that title. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> I, but I'm saying as far as, like, I feel like the, the judgment is what I'm saying. Like, I know mm. that there's a difference, but I feel like the judgment is different, too. Like, oh, you can say, like, I'm a content creator. And for some reason, that's not as demonized as I, I'm a porn star. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I'm like, you're doing the same thing, just, like, on a smaller scale. Oh, trust me. Like, there's, it's the same thing when you go into, like, fetish modeling. Mm. And they're like, oh, I'm a fetish model. Um, I, I like I don't penetrate myself or anything like that there's different like things it's just like you're like but like it's still like porn mm-hmm. you know it's just yeah. like the OnlyFans like they're calling OnlyFans stars porn stars and yeah. you're just like wait hold on like have they been on set for like yeah. you know 18 have you hours had, have you had a 12 hour day yet yeah. <laughs> no you just you just sit at home fuck yourself with a dildo yeah i used which to do I have, that too which is <laughs> i have no problems with clip artists like i'm no. obviously a clip artist like i think we all should be like uh you know all it's still the same community mm-hmm. at the end of the day like i see cam models and clip artists and fetish models and yeah, feature dancers. part of the same bear yeah, you know what i mean it's all adults at the end of the day um but it's like in my mind i'm just like uh they there is like a certain difference at one point, sometimes when you talk to people and I'm just like, you know, I do porn <laughs> and yeah. they're like, oh yeah, I only do OnlyFans. And you're just like, and you're like but that's still pornographic. Porn. Yeah. <laughs> like, cool story, bro. Do, <laughs> do men or women or non people, I don't know how to say, if you're neither, I don't know what that means, but you know, I don't know how to say it correctly, but do they watch you do lewd acts? Do they watch you naked? Do they watch you masturbating? Do they watch you, like, fucking someone? Yeah. It's porn. Or fucking yourself. You can, like, call it something else. Yeah. But it's still adult work. It's still porn. Yeah. It's still sex work. <laughs> like, and you can, so it's, it's, like, in my mind, I'm, like, maybe we're a little different because most of the time, like, we have a very, a very, I think in mainstream porn, we have a very structured, like, what we do. Like, I mm-hmm. always have a 14-day test. Yeah. I always, I'm, like, COVID tested and, like, stuff like that and, uh... I know the setup when I go on set. All right, like you get your makeup done. You might see pretty girls. You'll do dialogue if there is any. Then usually it's sex stills and an into sex. So there's mm-hmm. like a thing. But like I'm like, I've definitely met the different like uh, areas of porn, and like I'm just like, hey, like you know, <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I come in peace. I come in peace. <laughs> All over someone's face. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> what's, what's, like, some of your, like, do you have, like, a favorite scene that you've done? I mean, you've done so many by this point. Maybe more of, like, a favorite genre or something that you've created yourself that you really loved? Um. You said you've been doing directing. Um. <coughs> um fuck. That's a good question. <laughs> Hold on, let me think about. It. Let me. I oh, I, I love, love group sex a lot. I'm, mm-hmm. Like it's actually starting to come back now because once like the pandemic hit, it kind of like yeah, feel like we away. can't have as many people in a room together. <laughs> You're just like, oh my god. Um, I like extreme stuff. Like I do. I lean more towards like a Gonzo stuff, but or like the extreme acting mm-hmm. stuff. So. Uh, I do still like like pretty porn. I am yeah. such like a '90s porn star. <laughs> like I should have been, I should have been around that time as a porn star. But um, I like pretty porn. I think pe- I like people look pretty, and I like to mm-hmm. like get raunchy. Uh, group sex is my favorite because it's very raw. Mm-hmm. Like it's not really planned out. Like, all right, guys, so uh, we want you to just fuck everybody. Make sure that everyone gets like a little dip, and don't like segregate in like one area like spread out <laughs> keep it keep it moving yeah keep it moving like, don't it's like it. it's don't like stop. a speed dating yeah. but like just with speed dicking speed fucking <laughs> it's literally like that though they'll be like speed all right game. switch switch <laughs> they just have a bell ding yeah it's like oh 
Capcom like, yet, sir. Yeah, like, like that one. On game. to the next one. What was it? The one where you music? No, was music it musical chairs? chairs? You better get out of dick, or yeah. you're out. That you know? Be- that would be hilarious. Musical dicks. Oh my god, it's just like a bunch of guys with boners standing around in a circle, right? And you have to... Land on one, and if you play, don't, you're out. You play the music. <laughs> you're out! You're out of you there! Get out of there! <laughs> oh my god. That's so much pressure. Dicks. That's, like, that's <laughs> literally... <red>. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Musical dicks. Oh my god, that would be so bad. dicks. Like mental note. <laughs> Docking that one for later. <laughs> uh, so you said that you're now working with is it a, adult time? Mm-hmm. Adult time. Okay. So um, I was contracted as their ambassador, mm-hmm. uh, non exclusive, and basically I'll be working with them. I actually just came back from Montreal mm-hmm. doing a uh, Black Friday commercial. For them. Awesome. So yeah, and then I basically I like um I'll be I have like a certain amount of scenes that we do together and on top of that I will be co directing with Brie Mills as well. Oh yeah. Fancy. Nice. And then uh and it'll be original stuff. So like we're actually collaborating together. Like I've ha- I've done meetings with her and uh Actually, after I'm done here, I have notes that I gotta like go over because we want to try to finalize everything. People are getting like it's. I actually have my first co-directing the first week of like wow. October. That's exciting! <laughs> so, Congratulations! Yeah. And we're like collaborating, and I've given her ideas, and we're kind of bouncing off. So it's actually a, a really great collaboration. She's really good at bringing out the creativity in people. Like I like when I was talking to her, we're kind of brainstorming, and I'm like well this is kind of like what I want to do and then she would kind of bounce off and is really awesome so I am super excited I didn't know at first that it was going to be an original like my I like it's, yeah, it's part of my really idea exciting. is part of this yeah. like you know like it's like going to be a style that I want to shoot and uh we're um, I've talked to her about the audience that uh it's all time already has and like mm-hmm how we can collaborate to make sure that their audience really uh, is intrigued with what I'm already bringing on top of bringing in new, new, new fan base. Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm really very excited. excited. You look so excited. I can Big see it all in your face. Like, I'm hoping, like, I have so much more research I got to do. Like, I'm, like, watching different videos and the way that we're trying to um, kind of... <laughs> this new way of shooting is to try to get more into the generation that we are now. And Mm. it has to progress. Yeah. Mm. There, it just has to be shot right Mm -hmm. for it to really bring out the beauty that's in the story. Yeah. And, um, so I'm super excited. Like, Oh my God, she's going to be so proud of herself soon. uh, (laughs) It's so cool. It's so funny. Cause I told when I talked to adult times, uh, and, uh, Brie, I was like, you know, I did say that in like 10 years, I wanted to start directing. Well, next year is 10 years. So it's kind of like on point. I was like, whoa. You're just on your path, girl. I'm You're just killing it. Things are just, just going to line up left and right. Yeah. I feel like when stuff like this, like this wasn't part like when I was looking for being contracted, um, that wasn't like what I was really looking for. But when it was um, all talked out and kind of I feel like when things go just go smoothly it's just meant to be and I just knew I wanted to be uh contracted and then I did some research and uh you know Gamma has always hired me and I knew that their audience really liked me and I'm like I am very appreciative with the money that I make in porn Mm -hmm. but I love porn because I love what I do and I wanted to be with a company that definitely has supported my career Mm -hmm. and uh you know they book me a lot their audience loves me and I was like wow like that's when I I literally just you know I'm like I want to be contracted would you contract me that's amazing like, that's great and like to to kind of find yourself on the path that you wanted to be on must just feel so so amazing like when you when you first started like how how did you discover camming like i was at exotica when i actually <laughs> oh really <laughs> i was at exotica chicago okay. that was my first exotica and um i met i, I was meeting porn stars like or um at that time they were more amateur Mm -hmm. um and i was just talking to people and they were like you should start camming and like i'm like oh what is this because like when i got into porn and like 
I never like thought of myself as someone's fantasy like before porn. Yeah. You know, it was you know, just me. I think that's a lot of people from what I've talked to is mm-hmm. like I I felt that as well. It's like, oh, how could I you know Ew. Yeah. Me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Um but that's kinda how I started is uh when I, I m- was meeting up with uh, different amateur, like at the time we didn't even have clip artists, the title clip artist yet. Cause it was like it early. Yeah. Really. I hadn't even moved to Florida yet when I went to Chicago, yeah. I was really just starting. So it was like 2000, uh, yeah, 2012, 2013. Cause I moved to Florida in 2013, like literally on new year's day, I wow. packed up and moved. So Fresh um, start. yeah, basically I was like, fuck i want to get out of jersey so bad yeah <laughs> fuck this <laughs> and uh i literally went there and they were um they were talking about camming and i was like oh okay and uh i knew i wanted to shoot porn but then when they introduced this camming i was like well let's just see what happens yeah and Good i like starting ground to kind of like test the waters and all that what do you think is like like and I, and I try to say, because, you know, people always say, oh, you know, you're in porn because you're abused, because you're this, because whatever. And they always have these, like, stigmas about people who do the work that we do. Mm-hmm. But so as far as, like, the industry and all that, what would you say is, like, maybe you can't even say the best, but maybe top three of, like, things that you feel that the industry has done that have benefited your life, whether it's, like, how you see yourself, whether it's, you know, where you are, like, what would be surprising, I guess, about your life now? Well, from when I, you started. One of the top things, and I always say this no matter what, is I've never felt as much freedom mm-hmm. uh, in anything I've ever done. I, I came from a performer's background, so I was a, I was a dancer, and like movement's supposed to be our freedom, and this is how you're supposed to be able to be free in the space. And there was, but there was always some like, you know, hit. Like it wasn't as free as I am now, yeah. where um, I've. Since I was younger, I've never really formed to society very well. Yeah. So that's like a, a, per, a personality trait to me. Like, I don't want to form to like what people think I should be or what this is how it's supposed to be. The white picket fence and all that stuff. I just never like that. So when I got in here, it's almost like me finding my place. So like that freedom is probably one of my top things is that I have a community that I can talk about sex And it's not looked down upon or like um, if I'm experiencing something with my body, like I can tell you about it. Oh, my God. The openness with bodies Mm -hmm. now that I never had. Yeah. And like I get to experience like uh, different things. Like before I even got into porn, I never knew about BDSM. And um, I got to kind of venture into that as like a a submissive to Dom. And I'm like I consider myself a switch so I can do both. And it's for me like that is just that freedom and the people here, uh, there's no judgment. I think we get judged so much in life. Yeah. Like it's like right out of the wound. It's like, right. What do you want to do for the rest of your fucking life? And you're just like, wait, hold on. Like, it's just so crazy. Yeah. No, it's all the time. Cause it's like when you're a kid, it's like everything is new. Everything's exciting. And you fucking love yourself when mm-hmm. you're a kid. You can just like look in the mirror every day and just be like, you got this. And like, <laughs> like, look how you're dressed. You don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like you're a kid. You have like no self-loathing for yourself. And I feel like that doesn't come in until basically like the puberty. peer pressure and the yeah. puberty and all that stuff. And when all of a sudden there's judgment and it's like, you know, the, I feel like now in the industry, I feel like and it, it sounds weird to say in this industry, but like I found that inner child again. Mm-hmm. And it's like with a bunch of other people who seem to have found it too, where there's just like a joy in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And despite being judged by like an entire society, mm-hmm. it's like there's much less judgment like between all of us. Yeah. And I, I haven't found that in other areas of life as yeah. much. It's very hard. I feel like a lot of people like to judge. And I like, I've always liked to have a non judgment zone. Like this, this is me. And you can tell me anything. Like, and there's no judgment. I, but I've always been like that. Like before I did porn, like, my f- when I was a dancer and I was, uh, you know, working like five jobs and trying to survive and I needed that new career. I was like, great. I'm starting to hate my art and I really don't want to do that. Like, yeah. I, this is my first love. Uh, it's m- one of my dancers that had known me like most of my career. She was like, 
you know, you'd be great as a porn star. Because I was already so open sexually. Yeah. Uh, and people could come and talk to me about it. There was no judgment on anything. So, um, and I feel like porn helps me kind of discover things for myself. Like, I feel like we, out of any type of experiences in life, like, we all have some type of, like, experience, trauma, whatever you want to call it, whatever mm-hmm. label you want to put onto it. We all have experiences. <clears throat> your subconscious literally starts developing right out of the wound. You have no control. Someone could take your toy and in your head you're like, if I have something, I have to protect it and this is how I have <clears throat> to do it or whatever yeah. kind of goes. It all starts from childhood. Yeah. So, like, it's to be like, oh, you're important because you've had trauma. Um, we've all had trauma at one point or another and we all deal with it a certain way yep. or have a uh, experience that didn't go our way or like have stuff that we don't even know. Like, uh, your brain can like block, oh, it can out, block out so many yes. just years, just yeah. blocks yeah. and chunks of time. And like, I, I discovered that too, going through therapy. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, Oh, Whoa. I didn't yeah. know the brain could do stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then, and <clears throat> rediscovering that stuff can be like re-traumatizing as well and yeah, then it's figuring out how to work through that mm-hmm. and it's like everybody has trauma yeah everybody at some point has had something whether you realize it or not it could be getting into like a car <coughs> crash yeah, yeah. and no, not knowing everybody's has something yeah right or has had something yeah. and i feel like even like with molly like she said like when she was young she loved like you know changing multiple times a day mm-hmm. playing with things that were creative you mm-hmm. know like and look what she's you're both doing now it probably started when you were young where mm-hmm. you like had a passion and you get to do that in your daily life now yeah which is so well, cool it's like i always wanted to like entertain people that was like my yeah. big dream mm-hmm. when i was a kid and it's what i was always trying to do is get a reaction yeah. get, a, get a whatever and it's like or well, like get t- a reaction now <laughs> and now look we have tiktok <laughs> and it's like you get to do all that and yeah. get all these cool reactions yeah. and it's just, it's pretty cool. When I started know? dancing, uh, which I was around like uh, 10 or 12 or something around that era, that time, um, I started dancing because it was a way of me to express myself because I was very timid when I was a kid and um, I didn't know how to use my voice. And when you're a kid, you're not really like that. So I feel like when it came to performance, it was a way of me to express stuff I couldn't uh, express with words and it just has built like I still consider myself a performer and Mm -hmm. I get to express myself on camera more words now than anything but it's still like for me a form of expression and it gives you a safe space like um, you really have to know how to communicate yeah in this industry yes Um, like I'm I'm not going to, like, you know, sugarcoat anything. Like, I've had amazing days. I've had good days. I've had bad days. I've had worse days. Mm -hmm. Like, you get off set and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) I've had it. (laughs) Like, it's like a normal job, but you really, I've, out of my entire career, like, in the, some of the, like, stuff that has happened to me, like, I have no, like, problem saying, there was one time, like, I was on set. And um, it was uh, an extreme scene. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was me being belittled because I'm white. So it was a lot of like, wow, yeah. And when uh, extreme throat fucking and then uh, a lot of slapping and I got slapped wrong. So I basically got bitch slapped. So they use like the one part of their hand and a a little bit too more uh, like of their strength and I went down and I remember that I was fine and I communicated. I was like, Hey, you know, this this was too much. Yeah. Um, but the next day, like, uh, I actually had to go to urgent care. I had blur vision in my eye. My whole cheek was swollen. And so was my jaw. I had to get an anti-inflammatory. Um, I might've had a slight, uh, like a slight concussion. Like I got hit pretty hard. Um, but like stuff like that, like is 
like I had to communicate and yeah. um, that person did not get put on my no list. I just, I communicated. I was like, Hey, I think we need to redefine my boundaries when yeah. it comes to stuff like this. And like, I don't want to have to go to urgent care every yeah. time we fuck. So and I told the director, I told my <laughs> yeah. agents, I was like, to make sure that this doesn't happen again, what do we do? And like, when I'm on set, like when we do extreme stuff, I'm like, all right, well, if you're going to slap my face, this is how you're going to slap me. This is the way I want to don't hit me in the ears. I can ca- get permanent ear damage. If you slap mm-hmm. my ear, like I've had that happen a couple of times like this is like the you have to really communicate and you have to like uh, be strong about doing it like they can't make you do anything you don't want to do yeah like and I and, and I have had that ta- like in the thing like oh I just you know I want to like get the you know the scene I want to make sure like you know but at the end of the day it's about you and it's your body it is and stuff like that so like I definitely like I don't know I just this whole thing, like, I feel like it's made me find who I am and what yeah. I want to be and how I want to grow and how I want to represent, like, uh, all t- like not just women, just like, like human empowerment of being able to explore different things without feeling like you have to be secretive about it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, not everybody needs to know what you like sexually especially if you're not in Mm -hmm. porn but it's okay to have those feelings and it's okay to explore that with a partner that you feel comfortable with you know but I feel like a lot of people um that I've spoken to like on my subscription platforms for instance it's like well I like to talk about it with you because everybody else thinks it's weird Mm -hmm. or like it's you know weirded out and it's like everybody has something yeah everybody has something we all have our things yeah I I, like even with like getting into porn like I still like you know, throughout the year, I've kind of, like, molded into things, and each, maybe, I don't want to say each year, but, like, I slowly, like, adjust into different stuff, like, my body, I'm trying to, I want to keep my, the sensitivity of my body Mm -hmm. still high, like, I really want to make sure that I can feel things and be sensitive and not numb my nerve endings, yeah, because that could, like, that can happen, like, so, like, right now, like, I'm more, I like rough sex. I've always loved rough sex before I even knew it was rough. <laughs> I love choking. I love breath play. I, you know, I like more of a rougher type thing. So yeah. like, like, you but, get into stuff and you're just like, this is beginner. I'm advanced. I think like we need to step this up. <laughs> like those are, those are rookie numbers. Let's pop that up. <laughs> um, and then like, as I slowly go, like right now, like in my personal life, I like to be a little bit more submissive because mm-hmm. more than like, mainstream porn as being the MILF, I'm more dominant. Mm-hmm. And it just gives like, so you can kind of play. I don't know. I think it's, it's exciting for me. I, I would with being with, with what I have in front of me and my brand, I hope at one point that I can help people have an experience that I've had. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. kind of would be, that would probably make me the happiest. Yeah. And I, I agree with the, the switch thing. Cause it's like, um, but it's kind of funny because when you, when you think about it, like a lot of uh, submissives are submissive because they have a lot of control in other mm-hmm. aspects of their life. Mm-hmm. So in the bedroom, they don't, they don't want to have the control of it. They want you to have the control. And I feel that same way too. Because when I'm working, even if I'm shooting for browsers, it's always a ham scene. I'm always just a bitch. It's like, I hate you. I want to eat your pussy. Like, you know what I mean? But, and it's like, you know, I do a lot of Dom stuff as well in my content, Mm -hmm. like in the DMs, all that kind of stuff. But it's like, in my personal life, I do like to be more submissive. And I do like to be more taken control of because... I'm a business person. I'm always controlling all this stuff you just going want to on. Be able to re- like, I want to relax, relax for once. Yeah. I don't want to have to do all the work. Like, let me just enjoy the sensation. Yeah. Like, and there's a different, and I think also there's also different types of subs and, to- and, and doms as well. You yes. can be a sub and still be a top sub. Yes. Like, this is what I want, and then they do it. Yes. Or, like, a dom can be a bottom dom where they want to know what you want, and then they take over. So it's like, mm-hmm. There's, there's, still, so there's so many, so much stuff. different stuff to play with. Like, like <laughs> I'm like, all right, what crayon do I want to color today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna paint outside the lines Ooh. today. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, so, what else do you have upcoming before the end of the year? Uh, fuck. Um, let's see. Well, I have, I am feature dancing at Blackjack's in Illinois this coming Mm -hmm. weekend. Okay, fun. And I have a lot of shoots in LA. I'm actually going to be in LA for a good two weeks uh, this coming month. 
uh, my co-directing. So I have two co-directings for this year. Exciting. Um, Yes. (laughs) I'm so excited. And then I am going to Exotica. I'll be in New Jersey and D.C. Mm -hmm. I will also be feature dancing uh, twice in December. I'll be at Expose in San Diego the weekend, uh, December 16th. And then I will be at Deja Vu, also in Illinois, uh, for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. He's just going everywhere. (laughs) So I have, like, little things. I will um, also, I think it's at the end of October, I will actually be going to DomCon New Orleans for the first time, too. That sounds fun, New Orleans. I've been wanting, it's actually on my dream board. I've been to New Orleans before, but I wanted to go back. Yeah. So when I heard that DomCon was, I was like, you know, I missed the one in LA, but I heard the one in New Orleans is supposed to be even better. And it's just an excuse to go to New Orleans. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, you know what? I guess I'll go. <laughs> I, I love that cake. What is it? The king cake stuff. Is that what it is? It's got all the different colors, like green, yeah. yellow, and purple. Yeah. Oh, I fucks with that. I it's haven't so tried bad. it. It looks beautiful, though. I should get some. Actually, I had a fan send me a recipe that he said is amazing so maybe we should try to make it we and should we make with edible icing mm. that sounds delicious <laughs> delish delicious are you gonna take any like fun tours out there or, like what do you what do you want to do like most excited know. for new orleans yeah. i don't even know yet like i'm kind of just going to see what happens i am sponsoring domcon oh cool nice. so like there will be lp around (laughs) that's Um, amazing (laughs) but i'm actually like excited i want to meet uh some more pro dominatrix uh, that actually do this and i can kind of dip in because i feel like i've had um i want to be a pro dom like i don't like i love doing i love doing it online but i want to be able to do in-person sessions and stuff like that have your own like dungeon yeah oh my god bag full of tricks oh like you have no idea like i i actually at one point cannot wait to have like a dungeon where it's like it's my space and i can do my thing um so my goal is more to network and but I am a seminar junkie and I love seminars and I love hearing what people have to say (laughs) and their experiences. Like that's my whole brand is how I got here was listening to people's opinions and their experiences and their advice and what they thought and taking in everything. That's why I have a podcast. (laughs) <laughs> you I'm like, like tell me so. Learn the things today. You're gonna learn. <laughs> so like, I'm not. I'm most likely will probably do that. But um, I don't know. Part of me wants to go to a nice jazz club. <gasps> there you go. Ooh. And like, I want to use the jazz, jazz club with some coffee. Mm-hmm. It's gonna a be bene. amazing. Is that how you say that? Bene. A bene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Those I'm are so like, good. The ben- is it Benye? Is it Benye? Yeah. Benye. 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 And they're like puffs. Do you and remember then- those commercials? Like, what is it? Um, apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Do you remember those commercials? Yeah. 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 Those like, crazy commercials. Yeah. And, and that's just like the stick that was supposed to like, relieve your headache. And even as a yeah. kid, I was like, how in fuck's name? <laughs> That's funny. I actually had a beignet for the first time today. <laughs> yeah, at Phoenix Marie's. Like, so she's I like, I ordered beignets. They're coming. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so I wouldn't have okay. known how to pronounce that if it wasn't for this morning. I love how you just <laughs> This morning, it was chocolate filled and it was mm-hmm. a puff. Thank you, Phoenix. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> so good. <laughs> but That's like, amazing. I, I, wouldn't, I don't know. I just want to like explore. I, you know, I want to have like oysters and mm. uh, I kind of just want to walk and yeah. just just explore see where it goes yeah i have like i don't know everything's been so planned lately and like i also like i have a therapist i believe in therapy i'm all about it especially with with my like the job that we do well, even if it's not negative i agree yeah we're the like, same i i used to think it was something that you know it's just for crazy people mm-hmm. and it's like oh we're all a little crazy yeah. and that's okay <laughs> like that's fine because everybody else is a little crazy too like it's just figuring out how to like handle your own brand of crazy mm-hmm. and, and that's okay talking sometimes yeah. talking and having a person to talk to is yeah. just great. Like, so like someone you can vent to that's not someone you care about, so you don't feel like you're burdening them. Yeah, exactly. you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, like oh, this is things. This I don't is want the to bullshit say. I have to deal with. You know, <laughs> like oh, um, but she she had actually like because I work like I've been working so much lately and. I've had some new chapter, like a new chapter and some like things that's going on, um, which I've, uh, it's all, it's on my social media. So it's not like, uh, um, hidden, yeah. but, uh, she was like, you need to like take time 
for yourself, like period, like just go on a vacation. So this is kind of like my vacation. Like I have Don Com and I can go there when I want to. Yeah, and but you do don't my have thing. to commit to every single yeah, day. All like day. I might not throw like I was gonna do a whole latex outfit and have this and have it all designed. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go as LP and just kind of like do my thing. I might not go as like uh, Miss Phillips. I might just kind of do me. And if I want to go, I can. If I just want to go and you know go to the french quarter and just like fly do by the thing. seat of your pants yeah. see where it takes you sometimes it's good to some of the be best adventures just exactly. get there but it's it. but it is hard <laughs> to be spontaneous it's like for as someone who also is like very over planned very scheduled very very you know, color coded whatever yeah it's very hard to be spontaneous like in your mind you or you see other people and you're just like wow must be nice to just like be spontaneous i wonder if i can pencil that in for next wednesday like Like, (laughs) this is my spontaneous day (laughs) i've planned my day of spontaneity like i haven't planned anything for the day but i planned the day that i'm going to be spontaneous (laughs) it's as good as it's gonna get for me like i've already like planned like i have like i'm going to new orleans like that's the plan like i've never just like Oh, you know, I want to travel. Oh, let's just go to the airport and see where I go. I've never done that. Oh, no, God, like, I could never. Like, the panic. That, that sounds like fun. Like, <laughs> like, like, like I you. so want to do that. <laughs> Pick a place, any place. Like, I literally, we could go there and you could spin a wheel and see what happens and go. But I, in my mind, I'd be like, all right, so I got us Airbnb. I got us yeah. this. Oh, don't worry. Someone's picking us up. The ins- yeah. Yep. I already have a car ready yep. to go. Like, don't it, worry it's about the it. part. We got it. Yeah, you know, I, food's going to be there. Yeah. Be there. I was thinking <laughs> food. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, water, everything. It's there. It's going to arrive. Why everyone- It's literally how. Oh, look, they said we should go to the speakeasy. Like, it's just that. So I booked us for 7 p.m. on Friday. (laughs) I called ahead. (laughs) So technically, we're spontaneous of where we're going, but don't worry, everything else is planned out. Everything is taken care of. Don't worry. (laughs) Are you sure y'all aren't related? (laughs) Maybe. I mean, mean, you never know. A lot of similarities because we have money to make. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It could be a ginger thing, though, too. Yeah. Just kind of that. I, I actually I do feel like there's a lot of ginger that way because I actually had Erin Everhart on as well, mm-hmm. and she's very much the same mindset. Yeah. She's like, I'm building an empire. That's why yeah. I got in here to do something and fuck shit up, and I'm gonna make it happen, you know. And it's you know, funny. there's other people like that, of course, yeah. too. But I found it a lot with. I mean, we're all kind of just a little bit unhinged, I think, in the best possible ways. The best. <laughs> I like, you know, I like to be my freaky self. Like, yeah, I'm a freak. I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. I'm a freak and I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, thank you for joining us, Lauren. And you want to tell everybody where they can follow you on the social media or anything you want to um, promote? Man, you can just Google me and I pop up. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, uh, <laughs> all my social medias are the same. It's Lauren Fills Up, F I L L S U P, because I like to be filled up. <laughs> um, LaurenPhillips.com is my main website. Yeah. And if you want to see all of my links, you can go to LPLinks with a Z.com and I'll show you all. All of where you can go to see me. That's perfect. Well, thank you go so do much. Go it, everyone. Go do it. <laughs> so go Google Lauren Phillips mm. so that you can fill up her stroker. Go to and buy, buy the stroker. Mm. And yours too, huh? Oh, and yeah. mine. <laughs> Don't Gotta fill stack mine up. Em. Gotta Don't stack fill mine em. up. You just buy it and you put it on a shelf. <laughs> I want Never mine to be filled it. up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Please share with a friend. um, And we will be back next week with somebody new who you don't get to know until next week. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thank you guys. Thank you. See you later.